Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in James chapter 6, verse 12, as well as Hebrews chapter 4, verse 18. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Jesus, Lord, bless us as we learn and as we get through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, James chapter 6, verse 12. But above all, my brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. All right, and so we've had this confession a few times before, um, and it's basically, it, it gets straight to the point about not saying things idly, right? We shouldn't speak idly. We shouldn't even agree to things idly, and that's something that um, the Holy Spirit has been kind of convicting me of, like, not just that you don't just say yes or no um, and not mean it, but, um, or not, uh, or swear by something, but also that you don't agree with things that you don't agree with, right, because you're, you're, in a sense, you're, you're, you're aligning yourself with something that you don't agree with. So it says, but above all, my brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath. So don't, don't swear anything, right? Just allow your speech to speak for itself. Allow your speech to be the oath. Allow your speech to be the final say. Amen. All right, it says, but let your yes be yes and your no be no so that you may not fall under condemnation. So obviously, when you do swear by things, you are condemning yourself, right? You're coming under condemnation. And and that's not a good thing, right? We don't have to walk in condemnation because we walk by the spirit and the spirit is not going to lead you to swear, so um, we walk not by the flesh, but by the spirit. There's no, therefore, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So there's no condemnation there. If you're following after the spirit, you're not going to be swearing. You are going to, to let your words be the truth that you need, right? They're going to be all the oath that you need. All right, and this is conflated today with Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. All right, so it says, let us then with confidence. So we shouldn't approach the throne of grace with unconfidence, right? If we are to stand rightly before our Father, you know, we should have a repentant heart and we should not come in a spirit of condemnation. We should with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. And this is a throne of grace. Um, we have to remember that when we are um, approaching God, because God is a giver. This is a big gift that he has given us the to um, the gospel itself, the that he would give his son, right, freely for us as atonement for our sins. And all we have to do is, is believe it. That is a great grace. I'm going to circle that grace that we may receive mercy, receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So we're, so we're coming to this throne of grace. Remember this grace is a free gift and that we may receive mercy. Remember mercy is um, to hold back the sword, hold back vengeance, hold back the thing that is, I'm going to draw a sword, <laughs> hold back the thing that is, um, that should be coming to us. But instead God is, is giving us, instead of the sword, he is giving us, you know, mercy, 
mercy is holding back that sword and is saying and find grace to help in the time of need okay so when we come we're going to come boldly with that confidence um we're going to draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace so that that grace that we need that gift whatever whatever it is for that occasion that we are coming because it's to help in the time of need so whatever need we're facing it could be financial it could be spiritual it could be any kind of need that you may have for your family um uh whatever it is that you need you can approach the throne of grace with confidence right um you can come in in some translations say boldly boldly before the throne of grace so it says let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may find mercy and receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of lead and you know that receive mercy it, it makes you think of um esther right remember when she approached the the king um without being summoned and that was forbidden and this specific king had banished his wife for not coming when he called Right. And so therefore he had some issues with formality. So she had to come um, anyway, taking a risk. And and we know that in during these times, you don't approach a king um, it, without um, being summoned. So we can come boldly. Right. Because we're more than signs. It says, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So whatever it is that you have a need for, just come to him, right? And he's going to be there for you. He's going to give you that grace for your situation. And so um, those are, are conflated today because if you think about it, um, when we let our we we don't swear by anything it, it causes our our words to become more powerful right so as we powerfully operate then that confidence comes and it's easier to draw near to the throne of grace so the more boldly you um the more adamant you are about using your words properly the more um your words become more powerful in the spirit realm and so that when you come with um when you come to that throne of grace that confidence just easily comes with you right you can come with that boldness you can come with that confidence you can draw near to the throne without a hesitation why because you have let your yes be yes and your no be no right you have not allowed um your 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 words to just kind of fall by the way you your words mean something you don't swear by anything why because you walk boldly you are greater than sons and if your father is royalty and you are greater than something you're greater than a prince you're greater than a princess you are a king you're a queen and you don't have to swear by anything you could just speak and that with that with knowing that you you walk away from condemnation and you walk towards this boldness you walk towards this confidence and you can come to the throne of grace properly um and and when you get there oh god is going to honor the attitude of of confidence um and give you the grace and the mercy that you need for for whatever your circumstance you have to know who you are in christ and you have to walk in that you have to read his word and apply it he's going to honor that he's going to to love on you for for loving his word why because when you love his word you love his son all right you guys so let's pray father god help us to let our words be few and very powerful Help our mindsets to be focused on abiding in your word, 
Help us to take your word seriously, Lord. Forgive us for all of our sins and our mishaps in the past with our words. Lord God, help us to approach walking in your ways in a new way. Let your Holy Spirit bridle our tongue. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.